again, family. This little light of mine. Mm, sing with me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Everywhere I go. Mm, I'm gonna let it shine. I tell my big brother this morning, my king brother D, <laughs> I ain't high off of nothing but them, but my moringa powder. <laughs> I had me some plant-based sausage for breakfast this morning. All plants and my little moringa supplement. Remember what the Lord made, baby. And it's got me feeling high on this beautiful morning. Everywhere I go, mm, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine all on my job. Mm, hey, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? All right. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Good morning, how you doing? That made you smile. <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah. That's right. I'ma let it shine everywhere I go. Listen, people, God, you know, huh? <laughs> They be laughing at me. Um, you know what I want to say right quick? And then I'm going to get on off here. Because I got a very productive day today. In the name of Jesus. But when you learn the spirit that's fighting you. Once you are able to identify that spirit. Once God reveals and exposes that spirit. And it is revealed who is being used. Who is that spirit that's actually going to to enter your life or to do things to get at you when you identify the spirit because the key to the adversary and those who are of the dark arts is secrecy I've learned that Satan in his he's a coward these people are cowards you know, people don't like it they work behind the scenes they may be in certain positions people pick up the phone and make phone calls I ended that I did that they do things behind the sea. That's not a bold person. That's not, those are not bold, righteous people. Those are not righteous moves. The righteous is as bold as a lion, you know? And so, because we know that our warfare is not really carnal, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood against a person, even though our adversary, he uses people, he uses our brothers and sisters, those who have taken up his way, they follow their way their father's way and we follow our father's way the big g god but when you can identify that spirit hey when you can identify that spirit that's fighting you oh baby you halfway through your battle you done defeated you know your, your adversary the hands that done been revealed so they got to start over they got to go back and re-strategize and let me tell you once you identify the spirit you don't stop there you war against that spirit you know you war against that spirit. You fight against that spirit through your prayers. And then you dig in the word of God and see what the end game going to be like. Because that's the playbook of life, baby. That's the playbook of life. And see, once you dig in that word of God and you start seeing how these spirits are dealt with, how they are handled, all you got to do is stand on that. And you move how the spirit leads you to move. And folk will be wondering, dang, we done throw everything at this man. We done throw everything at this girl. They still getting back up. Who is helping them? Some people even start turning on themselves because there's going to be a spirit of confusion that God will send into the camp of your enemy. They'll be confused. They'll be confounded. You see? They'll be wondering which one of y'all talking to or which one of y'all telling stuff. Getting scared with each other and, and the main culprit sometimes getting exposed. The culprit gets exposed sometimes. But there's always evil is always opposing good. Violence always trying to come up against the kingdom of heaven that is in God's people. But we have to fight that. You have to fight for what belongs to you. Fight through prayers, you know. And the greatest revenge 
that you, the blow that you can throw at your adversary is not to be arguing with people, going back to back with folk, giving folk your energy. Sometimes keeping silence, and it may be hard to do sometimes. <laughs> it may be hard to do, people get under your skin. But just keep silence and stay in your lane and watch God prosper you. They ain't even see God prospering you, you know? You keep letting God prosper you. And you keep focusing on what you got going on. You're going to see the favor of God. All that coming at you, God see it. See what happened when when, 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 when Laban tricked Jacob and gave him Leah instead of Rachel. See, he set his daughter up for rejection. And when God saw Leah, she was innocent. She ain't had no, no what been going on behind the scene. But her daddy set her up for rejection. But her, she, she was hurt. Her heart was hurt. And see, so when, 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 when God saw how much she was hated, you know, envy began to take transpire between them two sisters that probably once loved each other and had peace because now one feel like the other one coming for their man and all kinds of stuff. But really, it was the foundation was crooked based on the father. See, the father not loving, the father being selfish, always a selfish spirit involved. Remember why we read this morning? So when God saw how Leah was hated and Jacob really didn't want her, but he got a good heart in him being the man that he was, he still... You know, ain't no man I think will turn down sex. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Maybe some out there that turn down, you know. May, I believe maybe some are turning down the natural desires. Because the way some brothers is coming at some sisters is just with all this hate and envy. You can't be desiring what's between a woman's leg if you're coming with so much hate and envy. I think that's compromise someplace that been going on. You know, there's a scripture that say they be giving over to others. But then that's a whole other stop topic. But let me stick with this topic. So what I'm saying is... When he saw how, hey, good morning. This is a cool good morning. People riding around on their little golf carts. When he saw how Liam was hated, what he did was there was envy between those sisters because of what the father did. What God did was he blessed Liam. He prospered her in her womb, in her body. Because he also saw that she desired uh, uh, good morning. How you doing? Good brother right there. He also um, saw how she desired a child. So he prospered her in her need that she wanted to be prospered. See, some of you got needs you asking God for. Focus on that. Let them keep doing all that hate. And God going to be prospering you over here. And the more they hate, they building your strength. Because you got to build strength to be able to press your way through these battles. To be able to dig in them scriptures and stay focused on the word of God. To be able to get up in the midnight and all throughout the day. Several times a day praying. Praying, you know, prayer is warfare. That's an act of war. Strong war too. Getting up in the hours, reading and stuff like that. Oh, that's an act of war. No spiritual strength being born. You can kill me just a little old, tiny little thing. And people wonder, where you get all this power from? Your tongue's so strong. I feel, I hear the power of God. I feel the power of God. You ever been around somebody? You got the power of God in them and you can listen to them talk. There was this lady once. I ain't gonna say her name. But I listened to this lady speak and preach and say things and I get goosebumps. You know why? Because I felt the presence of my father in her coming out through her words, words of spirit, you know? And so people see, feel that presence of God on you because in, in your private time, you really spend the time with them because you love them for real. You being intimate with them. They can look on the outside and look at the outside things you do. And, you know, everybody got opinion. We all got one. And sometimes we misjudge people. I have two. I put my mouth against people ignorantly growing up, you know, but you learn to not be so quick to do that after you have to walk your own walk. You know, it takes maturity. And so people going to think what they want to think sometimes, but, but you and God know. Because your life is going to show. Your internal work is going to show. So anyway, he prospered Leah where she wanted to be prospered. He kept blessing her womb because he saw how much she was hated. And so therefore, people of God, you got to keep going and you get focused on your areas of where you want God to prosper you at. You know, some of you, it's time for you to branch out and start your own businesses and stuff like that. You've been uncomfortable in some of these jobs. People ain't appreciating you. People ain't treating you right. Let it, that's supposed to push you to explore other ideas and seek your father to give you these ideas. Some things you're afraid to move on, but it's time to move. You know, some of you, some things is coming just to shake you up. They, they, they focus on your stuff and God, and you're going to see the hand of God in your life prospering you. Your businesses, well, if you already got businesses, those things going to keep trying to more they hate. I did a video last year about the more they hate. God is going to elevate because you ain't doing nothing to nobody. 
When you ain't messing with nobody, you think your God gonna just sit there and let people um, destroy you? Do you really think he gonna sit there and let them have their way with you? And there's some people, they done lost. They know they done lose. They losers. They have them have caught losers. Some of them know they done lost the battle. They done sit there and been in secret competition with you. And they lost their own battle because you ain't never been competing with them. They done lost their own battle secretly competing with you and know they couldn't keep up with you. See? Because you walking in the strength of God. You ain't walking in your own strength. You know where your help come from. You ain't trying to big yourself up or none of that. So anyway, back to this thing. When you identify the spirit that is fighting you, this, this, it's in your hands. See? That battle done already done won. They're going to have to go back and re-strategize. And then you will feel whatever's been, if you felt the presence of all that warfare trying to weigh you down, trying to make your spirit tight, all that, you will feel all your energy coming back to you. Then you got more relief. See? And that's keeping you. You probably somebody who's, if you're somebody who's staying in the word, all that do is keeping you digging in that word more and more. You know? Keeping you digging in that word more and more. So, identify when you identify the spirit that's fighting you you've already uh won the battle the battle is already won because the 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 the, the way the enemy operates is through secrecy it's hard to fight a silent enemy when you don't know what you're fighting but when you identify that spirit now you know what's been attacking you and you can defeat it you can cut it down through your prayers and keep on chugging along keep on walking yeah, keep going. See? Keep going. Job didn't know what was fighting him. He was complaining. He even had all these religious people. Had all these people around him trying to counsel the man, telling the man, oh, you know, everyone talking, taking their turn, going back and forth. And he just kept complaining. He wouldn't curse God, though. <laughs> even the devil jumping his wife and tell him, go, man, man hurry. She, she gave up on him. See? He ain't had nobody in his corner, ten toes down. That man was miserable. He he went from being an upright man all his life. And then all of a sudden, things start happening to him. And then they try to figure out all this friend, well, you did something wrong. Nobody ain't looking at spiritual warfare. Everybody got something to say, but then nobody could help him. And he kept crying out. When God pretty revealed himself and showed up to Job, <laughs> he pretty much said, shut up. Talk like a man. Because Job cursed the day he was born. Cursed the day he came out of his mother's womb. But he wouldn't curse God. When his wife told him, he said, you foolish woman. See, she had open doors in him for the devil to come. How, how bad it is. You got all your friends coming against you, depressing you even more. You're losing the skin on your body. You done lost all your children, all that. And it's just an attack of the enemy that God allowed. God allowed you to enter through that. God allowed the adversary. But I know, I know in my spirit, if Job knew that silent enemy, he could have begun to exercise his prayers and say, Father, this is Satan attacking me. I know this is not you. You have plans to bless me and prosper me. I've been an upright man. I was pleasing because the word already set the tone in the beginning of the book. Said now, Job, a man who was pleasing to God in all his ways, see? But he didn't know that that adversary, and the adversary had permission, see? Because it was making Job stronger. But the Bible says, the, right, our, the faith, our faith must be tried by what? Fire. So Job's faith was tried by fire. And now we in the earth, we have a greater advantage because we have all of these history books. We have all of these stories, these letters that have been left for us in this earth. And if we can read the rules, read the book, to the, read the rules to the handbook, put the pieces together, we have a greater advantage. It increases our faith. The words that faith comes by hearing, not what I say, but hearing the word of God, it makes you stronger. And when you stand on that, I believe if Job would have said, Father, this is the adversary attacking me. I rebuke you, Satan. You know, Father, I put a stop to this. Let no more destruction occur. Let no more heartache occur in my life, God. Close this door. Take away his power. Take away his authority. Take away the permission. Whatever he's using to attack me. Had, had Job known, he could have stopped the adversary. See? But God allowed all of that. And he knew in his heart what he had plans. He already knew his, his servant Job was upright. But he allowed Job to be tested. And then he gave him back more. It came back more. Everything he lost came back more. See? After you've been restored, you will forget the former days. <laughs> You go forget when God showed up, when, when when Job and God was conversing, he said, forgive me. I only know what I heard about you. 
See, he never had a personal encounter with God. That was his first time having a personal encounter with God. And people of God, I live to tell you something. Once you have a personal encounter with God, you will never be the same. I don't care what type of person you is. I don't care what type of life you live. You could have been the biggest drug dealer, could have been the biggest whore. You could have been out here, uh, been the biggest liar, cheater, crook, whatever you could have been. And if you renounce those things that was hidden and you had your personal encounter with God, you can't, you, you're going to make mistakes because we're still in this in his flesh, see, this war against the spirit. We'll never be perfect, but we strive for that perfection daily. And even when we make mistakes because you have stepped into righteousness, you can get up and brush yourself off and keep going. Righteous man may fall seven times, but he'll get back up and keep going. He'll be stronger. See, once you have that personal encounter with God, it's spiritual because we're to serve him in spirit. Because that which is born of the flesh is the flesh. When we come out the mother's womb, that which is born of the spirit comes from above. See, we, we, we serve him in spirit and in truth. Where did we get the truth from? His word. All of them let us. And see, the more you fall in love with him, you become an ambassador for the kingdom. It's your duty to put the word of God together. Folk over here may want to stay in a circle and go over the same thing over and over and never learning nothing new, never putting God's word together. But when you, when he put it in your spirit, and ain't everybody ain't called to do the same thing. Everybody got different callings, right? So we got to respect each other's callings. That's fine. But when he put it in your spirit and this in your, you got that strong desire to keep studying the word, he's calling you more and more deeper, deeper into him, deeper into the things of him. And you got to keep learning. You ain't going to get everything right. You may make this mistake. You learn. It's a growing process. He's building you through the whole way. And while you keep learning, putting the Father's word together, that strength in you, then you got all these attacks that be coming at you. New devils, new, new levels, new devils. People be coming at you. Why are you on your journey? You trying to study the word. You trying to be happy. Somebody going to come and try to throw a seed of discord. Try to put something negative in your spirit. You got to be strong. You can't be around negative people that don't know how to speak life in you. It's better to roll solo than to dwell with a negative person. In the Bible, it even says it's better for a man to live on the corner of a rooftop than to dwell with a quarrelsome woman, when a woman who always want to argue, always want to fuss and fight. You can't, you can't have peace with nobody like that. So it's better to live on a, for a man to live on the corner of a rooftop, <laughs> and vice versa. If you got, a, if you got a man who always want to argue, I, you know, I don't really know a lot of men who like to argue, which I've been seeing a lot of demonic stuff pop up on these comment sessions and stuff like that. But it's cool. It's evil is evil. That's different. But it ain't normal for a man to. We like to run their mind and argue and stuff like that, you know. But if you if got somebody that want to argue, the devil jump in and frustrate you, you better live on the corner of a rooftop, separate from them, than to dwell with them. Because there's no peace there. See? There's no peace there. There's no happiness. Hey, ain't no happiness in peace. Ain't no joy. There's no happiness when the peace is disrupted. See? The Spirit of the Lord is not there. So anyway. That's just my little two cents. Take it or leave it. Ain't no pressure, baby. When you identify the spirit that's fighting, you already done won the battle. Get in that word and see how the end game gonna be like. It's gonna be in your favor. The victory is already won. You just gotta press through and believe it. Stand on the word.